Tim's got a cold. We catch at least two a year, and it's easy to see how. With every cough and sneeze, he's firing out germs. Infectious material may be shot 13 <coughs> feet at faster than the speed of sound. You also catch colds by contact. They are more likely to be passed on by touch than by coughs and sneezes. We carry germs on our skin and transfer them to others along with deposits of dead skin cells which we constantly shed. To show us where he and his bugs have been, we put a special fluorescent dye on Tim's hands. Now we'll rerun the scene in UV light. A few bugs for Judy. Some for the peanuts. A few more for Judy. And here go a few more to the bartender. Some of Tim's germs can be killed by antibiotics. Bacteria like this one literally explode. But antibiotics won't touch viruses. Polio, AIDS, hepatitis, they exact a terrible toll. In 1919, Spanish flu wiped out more people than World War I. This is a computer portrait of a cold virus. It's one of the most primitive forms of life. Viruses cannot survive for long outside a living cell because they can't reproduce without help. Here a virus invades a human cell. Once inside, it hijacks the cell's control mechanism and uses it to make thousands of copies of itself. The cell explodes and vomits out pieces of itself containing invisible virus particles. Released into the body, they soon invade other cells and the infection spreads. This is a human cell in its death throes, infected by flu virus. The cell shrivels up and dies. At this stage of infection, the body's ultimate defense systems are on red alert. Special white cells have their own route around the body, a second circulation system called the lymphatic system. These cells use this highway to patrol the body, constantly on the lookout for invaders. They may take direct action or return to a lymph gland to raise the alarm. White cells have their own highways and their own headquarters. Here's the inside of the tonsil where a host of white cells are waiting for action. Each plays a special role. It's a two-pronged attack, chemical warfare and hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The thrashing stick-like objects are bacteria under attack from the body's killer cells. It's an unequal struggle. Within seconds, the bacteria are destroyed. A gang of human killer cells attacks a foreign cell. It's a fight to the death. Here, a white cell is ensnaring bacteria. They are impaled on the cell's tentacles. Once captured, they will quickly be eaten and destroyed. White cells don't always win. This one has itself been killed, disemboweled by its prey, a needle of asbestos in a human lung. After the killer cells, the chemical warfare begins. The body's immune system swings into action. 
Special cells are summoned to make a chemical poison against the invaders. We're equipped to produce hundreds of thousands of different poisons, Y-shaped molecules called antibodies. Each is a specialist designed to attack just one particular germ. Antibody molecules make for particular sites on the virus's coat, the white patches which mark it as foreign. A chemical process is triggered, which dissolves away the cell walls and kills it. If we should ever encounter that virus again, these cells will remember and react faster, so it never takes hold. We've become immune. But viruses can change their coats and fool our immune systems, so the battle against infection goes on. Every hour of every day, our bodies fight for survival. White cells are constantly in action. They kill by strangling, by poison, and by crushing. If these cells turn their vicious attack on our own tissue, we would never survive. Defense and repair is one of the most vital functions of the human body, even in the laziest of us. It is also one of the most effective and efficient. It keeps us one step ahead of a hostile world.